Hello everybody. Um, for those of you that are normal watchers of my channel, uh, you've seen me here before at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. For those who have not, let me explain. Keith Rucker has a YouTube channel called Vintage Machinery and he does a lot of the restorative work here in southern Georgia at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. Got a couple of videos where I've been here before. Uh, Keith is here today and um, we came up here for a kind of a special event once a year. Hello everybody. Hey Scott, how you doing? Rob, hi guys. They have a real special event up here once a year where they kind of run everything here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. Um, behind me is the cotton gin um, and we'll talk real quick about the cotton gin and why it's not running. But we're here for, most specifically for me, for one particular thing. Um, and that is um, to see them uh, distill turpentine. There's a turpentine still. And so we came here to see that and to see everything else because we've already seen most of the stuff. But I wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. Since some folks may not have seen what's here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, I'm going to try to give you a quick look around. I don't want to repeat myself on the channel, but this is a really, really neat place. If you're ever headed south through southern Georgia down on Interstate 75, uh, this is literally, I-75 is right on the other side of this building, so you can you can stop in here and, and check it out. Um, it's a really neat cultural experience from, and I might have the dates wrong, from about the 18, 1880s all the way up to like the 1920s Industrial Revolution time. There's two separate time periods here, working steam engines, working cotton gins. Uh, on the other side of these trees behind me, th this is the railroad track right here where the steam locomotive you always see Keith work, work on. That's the track on the other side of that is the earlier time period. So uh, they had a little problem. They fired up the cotton gin this morning. Keith got here real early, uh, fired it up, and apparently during the winter it froze and broke a valve. And those of you know, th those of you that know Keith know that he, uh, well, the Uncle Keith ruckered it. He, uh, he fixed it. They uh, had a repair to fix a busted pipe and they've got it up and running. I think they're on lunch break right now. They've been they've been working on a couple of things there. But so um, what I want to do is I'm going to give you guys a quick walk around here that haven't been here before. We're going to make our way that way, which is that way. And we're going to go over and see the turpentine still explain to you distilling turpentine because I know a lot of you have not this ever seen turpentine distilled before. Uh, what why we distilled it what we did in an earlier time period. I think it's really neat um, From my view, I'm going to turn the camera back around one more time here real quick and I'll point out what we have. So this is would have been like the main street and They have the general store uh, An ice cream parlor some different things there way down there in the end is the sawmill Right there is a print shop where they have working uh, typeset type printing presses um, and just around the corner is a woodworking shop that's steam driven and a blacksmith shop and then kind of That way down the hill is where they're distilling turpentine So we're gonna take a little walk through Main Street Scott Tyndall likes the ice cream Yeah, Scott I hear I'm gonna be seeing you this summer, huh? Congratulations, buddy So Here's the uh, ice cream shop, general store. You, know, you can go in there and buy a sandwich or whatever. Feed and seed. Again, this is for the folks that haven't watched my uh, live streams before. If you can hear, the Vulcan locomotive that Keith just had to repair is getting ready to pull in here. Scott, Keith and I were talking about you about your win congratulations again so right here right here is the woodworking shop there's the Vulcan coming in I don't know where the barber shop is uh, you know it's probably let me turn without trying to make you too dizzy it may be in that center building right the center office space I don't know there's a lawyer's office up in the top, too. I haven't been up there yet. <clears throat> so, uh, they make barrels in there. 
And over here in this building is the carpentry shop. A lot of the stuff you see Keith do is in here in this building. Hello, John from Ireland. Here's the blacksmith shop. Again, that's the printing press right there. This is the blacksmith shop. As you can see, he's uh, he's stoking some coals after his lunch break there to. So they also do make some barrels in here, part of the barrel making. So here's the deal with, well, hold on, right there. We'll go over to the sawmill real quick. So any of you guys that are YouTubers that like to watch this old timey, old stuff, may have uh, watched a guy on YouTube named Steve Cross. That guy running the saw right there, he has a YouTube channel. That's Steve Cross. Now, ironically, Steve and I are friends, but not through YouTube. Back when I used to work on the TV show Extreme Makeover Home Edition, I met him, and we've been friends. And I didn't even know he was going to be here. And I said, hey, that looks like Steve Cross. And Keith Rucker said, yeah, that's Steve Cross on the sawmill. So how weird is that? Uh, I think Keith is on lunch break right now. But I want to come over here and talk about this still, because this is pretty neat. And so... <clears throat> they distill pine sap so they take a pine tree they cut the bark off it right um they let it run down they put a little thing in the bottom called a cat face and they catch it in a bucket similar to like maple syrup they take the the pine sap after they collect it they take it up over there and take it up there and they dump it they dump the pine sap down into a copper kettle that's in the bottom. Now, this is the same thing as a giant moonshine still. So, those of you that do a little backyard uh, uh, medicine making, we'll call it, uh, basically same concept here. The pine sap stays in there. They build a fire. The fire, when they get the, the pine sap up to about 200, 200 and I think he said 12 degrees because it's the same thing that water boils at. 212 degrees the pine the uh, turpentine and the water will boil off they come up to the top they condense they condense down into this vat now turpentine and water will not mix so they come into this vat it cools and so what happens is the turpentine and water mix comes into here and it drains out of here into this barrel the turpentine will float always float to the top and if you see right here there's a pipe and this pipe comes down into here so what happens is the turpentine they keep the level there's a plug down on the bottom they keep pulling off the water to keep the level so that the turpentine on the top always comes down into here and they repeat this process again in this barrel where it comes out of out of here where they get pure turpentine and then you can see the plug at the bottom they pull the plug out the plug keeps the water level lower so that it's always turpentine on top that water never comes up to this level the turpentine always drains in here so it's like a, a double distillation i guess or double sampling process now uh, turpentine has a lot of medicinal qualities uh, as well as um, turpentine uh, is used uh, in paint thinning and a lot of different things but that was before uh, we have like the modern chemistry you know um, the polymers and, and all the different stuff so when they first started making a lot of paints they made it with this once they take all the VOCs out of the turpentine out of the sap right all the VOCs come out there's rosin left in the bottom that rosin once it's at a, a particular level of lack i will call it lack of vocs they open this gate right here and this gate allows the rosin to pour out now it's liquid because it's really hot it comes out and you see it's got a sieve here this looks like like regular quarter inch hardware cloth gets any leaves pieces of bark whatever out of there drains through there into this it's kind of like cheesecloth material it purifies it again it drops down into this vat now rosin is hard but at this point it's really hot so they're scooping it out with this ladle here 
they take the rosin and they just put the hot rosin into these barrels. Now, this is just some pieces that people have chipped away, but this barrel has got away. I mean, I can't, I can't even wiggle it. That barrel's got away six, seven hundred pounds easy, and it's solid of rosin. So, while they dip the rosin in there, it's still off-gassing VOCs because obviously it's a pretty crude method. They can't get it perfect. So actually, uh, right over there on the other side of the building, the fire department is here. They'll have guys all in their turnout gear when they open this thing and for a while because <clears throat> they don't want the VOCs to build up in here and then it to go boom, obviously. So they got a guy standing by. I just think it's pretty cool because, you know, this is super old technology, but the turpentine that comes out of there is almost, if not more pure than the turpentine that you buy in like the homeless despot or the, the Lowe's you know, in a can that's not distilled this old fashioned way. I think, I just think it's pretty neat. Um, if anybody's got any questions, you know, be sure to uh, pop them up on the screen, type them in, I'll try to answer them. When they let this out, I'm gonna try to go live again so you guys can see them let it out and see the whole process. Right now, he said it would be around three o'clock Eastern time. Craig says you tap maple trees, you don't cut them down yet. Uh, they don't cut pine trees down either to get the sap out of them. They, I'll show you that actually. There's an old piece of a tree over here. So what they do is they, this is a, just a piece of a, they cut this tree down for an example to show everybody. This is called, uh, well this part right here is actually, I don't know if you guys can see it. This is called a cat face. So what they would do they take the pine tree and they would take a tool like a like a like an axe and they would cut the bark off it off the pine tree and they'd expose the cambium layer i guess it is where the and the tree starts to try to heal itself so it starts leaching sap out of it and then they put these metal bands similar like how they used to do before they tap maple trees they put this metal band this thing's called a cat face because it kind of looks like a cat smiling face they put them at different levels and hang buckets and the, the sap would run down the tree get into the bucket they would come around pick up the buckets and put them in barrels the barrels come over here they roll up there and you can see those were the barrels that they dumped in there this morning they dump them down that that top comes off the condensing top or there's a name for it a bell i'm not sure what their correct name is that comes off they pour the rosin down in there sorry not the rosin the sap down in there and then that sap is slowly distilled cooked and basically all they're doing is heating it to the point that that all the all the turpentine vape, uh, boils becomes a vapor comes off they recondense the vapor and then separate it from the water um i hope that answers that question they don't cut the pine tree down to get pine sap out of it although lighter they can get it out of the lighter stumps i don't know how they do that i'm not real sure um so the plan here is it's supposed to be three o'clock around three o'clock estimated you see what time it is right now around three o'clock my time they estimate they're going to open this so i won't be able to schedule a time for them to open it because they have to actually do it by the percentage of water that they're getting out of the the percentage of the water and vocs or vocs being the turpentine they're getting out of there so I'm just going to put up another live video. It'll probably come up fast. If you want to see them let this thing out, I'm going to try to do that so that we have a record. People can check it out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, uh, and I hope we'll see you here real soon.